All right, so after the Freedom Truckers convoy, the journalists got together to self-congratulate themselves on such a great job they did. We got Judy Trin over here. Judy Trin is CBC investigative reporter. Let's take a look. Journalism under siege at the University of Carleton. Leading journalists discuss reporting on the Ottawa convoy. There, it's interesting that some comments online say that there is no diversity in this panel, right? That we are, but look at this panel. Look at this panel. They're so diverse. It's very diverse. But they would say no diversity. I mean, it is a protest of predominantly white Canadians, white people demonstrating, and the that's you, Pan. White Canadians. Wow. Oh uh, well, I'm not a Canadian, but I, I was gonna say, you know, these beautiful people sitting up here, and then you know, she turns it into some sort of racial issue, and now I'm questioning um, her beauty. Privilege that that brings the individuals who have been held responsible or accountable so far. Ottawa's first black police chief, Ottawa's first woman police board chair. Everything is about your identity straight away. Just jump right into it. It doesn't matter about what happened, why did it happen, what people did, what the emergency act. Forget about all that. Let's just jump straight into race. I mean, that those are that should just scream out to you uh, that <laughs> that there is something wrong. There is something wrong. And if you want something right, please subscribe to WCFreedom.com. Go to it right there. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much. This protest was allowed to grow in scale to a degree because they were predominantly white individuals. Wow. So the protest was allowed to grow in scale because they were predominantly white. Mm, if they were of a different persuasion, creed, or color, the uh, protest would have been crushed right away. Well, you know what happened in the end? It was uh, unfairly crushed in many people's opinions. If you listen to the convoy organizers when they are talking about how they should deal with police, you have a former ex-RCMP protection agent of the prime minister basically saying, I go up to police and I tell them we're just like you. I know you feel me. I know you understand me. I think because he's trying to relate to them on a human level. It's nothing to do with the race that they share, that they're both. Look, if you're Scottish, you're Irish, you're from uh, Russia, okay, you may have the same skin tone, but that doesn't mean you're the same everything. That's got nothing to do with it. We speak the same language. So there are those ties. So there are those ties of systemic issues, racism, discrimination, working together. Is that really what it is, or is it an appeal to humanity when you're talking to a police officer and trying to speak as a human being? Is it just an appeal to humanity, or is it a racial... And I think that that is probably one aspect of the protest that has not been adequately explored and should be explored more. These protesters were very skilled in the sense that they knew certain um, what, you know, even if they knew what a military operation looked like, they were organized. They knew what a military operation looked like, Pan. Wow, is that what that was? I mean, it seemed like a peaceful, um, almost festival-like protest to me. Military operation. Right? So for me, that I wanted people to understand that part of it, that it wasn't just fun, that it was individuals who had these uh, paramilitary skills. No, she didn't just say that, paramilitary Boy. skills. <laughs> Wait a minute. She's talking about the truckers are like, you know, paramilitary. Well, some of maybe some of them were, but that wasn't the point of this at all. Paramilitary. I don't think they were paramilitary, number one. And number two, just because you wear cargo pants doesn't mean that you're part of the military. I wear cargo pants. I've definitely never been part of the military. Who could use it to entrench within the city, who perhaps had access to firearms because we knew that... There was no way police could search hundreds of vehicles. They could not, they did not have the grounds for a search warrant. So what was in those trucks? Yes, what was in those trucks? Probably like sleeping bags, uh, some cans of tuna for food, you know, some uh, some bread, some some water that they're trying to keep from freezing. And, and that's you know, about it, probably. Toilet paper. Uh, we knew paper. that some of them, uh, you know, we knew that there were um, members of the JTF too. We knew that there were at least uh, 10 active soldiers who... 10 active soldiers 
who also loved freedom. We're sympathetic to the cause. Were they part of the protest? We don't know. Oh, they were sympathetic, but they, we don't even know if they were part of the protest. Okay. But we knew that they had these skills. So by putting that type of information out there, at least we knew that this was a real threat. By putting that information out there, we knew that this was a real threat. That makes no sense. It wasn't just people protesting peacefully for uh, or against uh, vaccine mandates or mass mandates. It was individuals who, if they held extremist views, also had military training, which made them even more dangerous. So that was quite the leap of logic. <laughs> This is insane. I was, this is the Carleton, University of Carleton, which has an, a stellar reputation for journalism, their journalism school. This is taking place there, okay, in Ottawa. There's two main universities, Carleton, University of Carleton, and also University of Ottawa, where I met my beautiful wife. Uh, anyways, point is, this is taking place there. This is the retrospective taking place by the head honchos, I guess, the, the top tiers, the the, the, the luminaries. Before we got active in politics, don't ask me how we did, but here we are today, maybe because that's what passes for journalism today. Uh, we were involved in the culture war, very specifically around comic books. You've seen that moral degradation in movies, TV shows, film, comic books as well. That's where we were. I was a big fan, and I, so was Pan, and Pan specifically with Turtles, by the way, Ninja Turtles. Uh, we created these over here, Vestige and Bullet Maker. Check those out. Bullet Maker is available right now. That's a great way to support us. Link is in the description. Post-apocalyptic, pre-Armageddon, action fantasy. Thank you for your time. Of course, WCFreedom.com right here. Please get on that, the newsletter, so you don't miss a beat. And please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you, and hail, brethren.